Joel chapter 2. Verse 21, are you all there? Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then. So that is good. Fear not. Be not afraid. So what must we be? Be glad. <laughs> ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately. And he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first. We put a lot of emphasis on everything comes from God's side. He's the initiator of it all. He's the one that turns you. He's the one that calls you. He's the one that's anointing you. He's the one that equips you. It's not how much we do. It's how much we trust in what he does and what he did. So here he says, I will cause for you to come down rain, former rain and latter rain in the first. Hmm? Verse 24, listen what will happen then. And the floors shall be full of wheat. And the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palm worm, my great army which I send among you. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. Ah, God says, I will send the rain. God says, the years as well as the stuff, okay? God says, supernatural supply. God says, you shall not be ashamed. So everything comes down to the rain that will fall, you know. And if that supernatural rain of God will fall, the land will produce. If the spiritual rain will fall, the church will produce. So there will be the physical rain to see that our land produce. There will be the spiritual rain to see that you will produce. And God says, I'm not only giving revival, I'm also giving restoration. I'm also giving refreshing. God says, and in this restoration, revival, refreshing, supernatural, abundance supply, where you will have everything to be filled and be flooded with a surplus, God says, then you will not be ashamed. Amen. Knock, knock, knock. Who's there? Oh, we just come to take your car. You're three payments behind. Oh, man, I'm so ashamed. They come and take my car away. And I trust God to heal the sick, pray for the sick, and they go home sick. I'm so ashamed, you know. I trusted God, but the sick are not healed. Yeah. Well, I confess that the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. But we stand and beg on the street corners. It's so, I'm so ashamed. What will happen if everything you touch and do, you'll never have the reason 
to be ashamed. Amen. Come on, Christians. Not only in the face of people, but in the face of yourself. Yeah. Have you felt ashamed because stuff didn't happen like you wished it to happen? The supplies didn't come like you confessed it should come. The healing didn't spring forth. And then you go back and you take the tablets again. You're so ashamed to drink that stuff. You trusted God. The minute the water flows, the life source of humanity, the supernatural breakthrough will come. So let's go do a few scriptures in the book of Isaiah. We're starting at chapter 41. Listen to verse 18. We're just going to jump to a few. I will open rivers in high places. Amplified would say on the bare heights. And fountains in the midst of valleys. Remember Psalm 23 when I go through the valley of the shadow? You know? Now, just before he went through the valley... God first took him to the still waters. Yeah, yeah, amen. And at the still waters, this is what happened to him. He restored him. And the minute he came to the waters and got restoration, it was no problem to go through the valley. Okay? So the valley wasn't the problem. The valley was the proof that I'm already restored. I'm already revived. I was already at the water. And later on, you're going to see what the valley story is about. And it's not down in the valley. Okay, it's not okay. Okay. Um, God says, I will give fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water. And the dry land springs of water. Everything here about the water is all the time God says. God says. God says, I will open rivers in dry places. God says, I will give fountains in the midst of valleys. God says, I will make the wilderness a pool of water. God says, I will make the dry land springs of water. Come on, say water, 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 water. Hmm? Is that okay? 43. Shout, bro. Hmm. This is cool. Verse 18. Scripture that's been preached without telling us what they say. Remember not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? Here it comes. I will even make a way in the wilderness. Comma. The end is not there. Rivers in the desert. So God says, if it seems like you're going through dry places... If it seems like you're in a valley, if it seems like you're in trouble sometimes, if it seems like the supply, the abundance, the healing, the breakthrough, the power is not there, I want you to know that I am the God that gives rain. I am the God that brings springs and wells and fountains. And every time you think it looks dry and deserted and you feel alone, God says, if you understand what I'm going to say about revival rains, then I will spring forth, you know, rivers, fountains, wells. So you will always live in a land of abundance. But why don't we? Well, that's why we're preaching to do. My people perish for lack of knowledge, Isaiah 4, 6. So if we get the knowledge, maybe we get the breakthrough. So say, I'm gaining knowledge on water tonight. Waters of supernatural supply. Hmm? Verse 3, amplified. I will pour water on him who is thirsty. And floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit on your offspring and my blessing upon your descendants. And they shall spring up among the grass like willows, willows or poplars by the water courses. Just like a tree planted by the... I shall not be moved. Not be moved from where? Not be removed from the waters. You will always be stable. You will always. And Psalm 1 says, The man that is planted like a tree by the waters will always be prosperous and he will be successful in whatever he does. 
Come, is there stuff in your life that hasn't been prosperous? Is there stuff in your life that hasn't been successful? God says, if you can get that willow popper, if you can be planted there by the waters, if you understand, God says, I will pour water on him who is thirsty. That's not what Jesus said. Jesus said, if you drink of the worldly waters, you will thirst again. But if you drink his waters, you will never thirst. And the context is not that you will not thirst. It says, there will always be water when you are thirsty. But the world doesn't always get when they are thirsty. 66. Yeah, just verse 12. Just verse 12. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. Then shall you suck, not like that sucks. I mean, you shall suck because they supply. <laughs> Verse 14, and when you see this, your heart will rejoice. Your bones shall flourish like a herb, and the hand of the Lord shall be known towards his servants and his indignation towards his enemies. Okay, now we know that the word of God declares that the wealth of the wicked are laid up for the just, and eventually it will find the way into the hands of the righteous. You know, we know Isaiah 60, 60 says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And he says, The kings of this earth will come, and they will bring their riches to Zion, the city of God, which is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And here God says, and if you read the context, you know, it's so awesome. God says, I will bring peace to you like a river. And what the heathen nations have, I will make it flow like a stream towards you. So the whole thing is God says, if you understand the emphasis I put on rain and water, on rivers and streams, on fountains and springs, if you understand the importance of drinking at the well that never run dry, if you understand there's rivers of light flowing and you can come to the throne and out of the throne and out of the Lamb comes a river of living water. If you understand Revelation closes with everyone that is thirsty, come to the water and drink of the water of life freely. If we understand what God thinks about it, bam, there it comes. Right into your life, supernatural supply, streams flowing, prosperity. And if you sit here, mm, you know, it hurts me because, you know, I've got a problem there and I'd failed there and I've been repossessed there and I've been sick there and I've been to a doctor there. It's for you that I'm bringing it so that you'll suck and not suck. <laughs> Let's go to 32. Verse 21, the Lord will be for us in majesty, splendor, a place of broad rivers and streams where no oar-propelled boat can go and no mighty and stately ship can pass. Ezekiel, you know, tells us about this river that comes out of the temple, where we are the temple and out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. He says this river it gets so deep and so wide that you can't pass over and cross over. Talking about the revival will be so awesome that no worldliness can enter and touch what God wants to do. He says the river is going to be so wide that stately stuff and worldly ideas will not be able to touch when you get the real supernatural flow of Holy Ghost waters of revival. And this is what the church need. Not another revival that will stop, but one that will increase and increase and grow greater and greater and greater. So if we think of restoration, I think the biggest example for me stays Uncle Job. Hmm? Job. I mean, in chapter 1, he was the richest man in the East. In chapter 2, he's the poorest sucker on the earth. You know, lost everything overnight. I mean... Satan comes in amongst the sons of God. He says, God, just take your hand away. God says, you know, I will not. It's my man that, you know, is righteous. Uh, you know, Satan says, yeah, you build an edge around him. You protect him. Take your protection away. God says, watch him. He's already in your hand because he feared. You know, so uh, Job 3.25, Job says, the stuff that I feared, this is what's come upon me. So Job says, fear not. Be not afraid. Don't let your hedge fall, but be glad because God says, I will send the rain. I will give the water. I will give the supply. So keep on saying what God says and don't say what the circumstance is saying. Don't fear the situation. 
But in Job chapter 42, here the Bible says in verse 10, And God restored the fortunes of Job. And he gave him twice as much as he had before. And he lived another 140 years and got another seven sons and daughters. He says, and all his family started bringing him gold and silver and earrings and watches and jewelry and crosses and, and puma shoes. And they just blessed him. <laughs> but in between, he got a lot of prophecies, you know. And the greatest prophecy for me was from the short guy. You know, bull dad, the shoe height. Okay, let's go to Job chapter 8. Very insignificant guy, shoe height. Listen, listen to the prophecy of Bildad after Job has just lost everything. He's sitting on the ash heap, scrapping himself. Dogs come to lick his sores. I mean, this man is in worse shape than you. This man is worse than you. He's sitting on the ash heap and the dogs are licking his sores. I see no dogs licking nobody's sores here, okay? Okay. We get it. I mean, this man is in a bad shape. Listen to what, what Shuhite says. Verse 5. <laughs> if you will see God diligently and make your supplication to the Almighty, then if you are pure and upright, surely He will bestir Himself for you and He will make your righteous dwelling prosperous again. Now, people would love to lay the emphasis on if you. If you, well, if you will. But what about God will bestow? God will supply. God will provide. God will restore. God will revive. Now listen to verse 7. And though your beginning was small, yet your latter end will greatly increase. Verse 11. Can the rush or the papyrus grow up without marsh. You know what marsh is? A water land. It's a big field where you can't build or do anything because everything is underwater. Can the flag or the reed grass grow without water? Job, you may be sitting on a dry ash heap right now, but God is going to bestir himself on your behalf. God is going to make your righteous dwelling to be prosperous again. Though your beginning was small, the richest man in the east, your latter days will greatly increase. So it's not how poor you were, how rich you were. It was what is God's plan for you in stuff to go. I will send the rain. I will make your vats run over. I will make your floors full. I will. So Job is, I will, I shall, I will, I shall. But God says, don't fear, don't be afraid. Be glad because here comes the rain. So Job... I tried to explain. The Shuaite is now prophesying. He says, Job, it works like this. Can the papyrus plant grow outside of a marshland? Can reeds grow where there's no water? Job, I'm trying to tell you, you need a supply of water. You need something supernaturally to start happening in your life. <laughs> Verse 12. While it is yet green in flower and not cut down, it withers before any other help when it is without water. Remember Psalm 1 and Jeremiah 17? Blessed is the man who doesn't sit and walk and stand by the sinners and the scornful and the wicked, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper, and he shall be just like a tree planted by the waters. Blessed is the man, Jeremiah 17, whose trust is in the Lord. He shall be like a tree planted by the waters, and everything he does shall prosper. Joel 2, and he shall not be ashamed. How would you love to prosper in everything, to be successful in everything? No matter what you attempt, it's successful. No matter what you attempt, it's prosperous. No matter where you go, you're always healthy. You're always strong. No matter what. Hmm? Now look at the rest. Verse 20. 
Behold, as surely as God will never uphold wrongdoers, same way he will never cast away a blameless man. Now, is it because I try to be holy? Now, listen to the grace message that we've been preaching for years now. I believe that he justified me, he sanctified me, he made me righteous. It's not because I quit doing stuff. It's because I believe what he did on the cross. It's for believers and not for achievers. Believers become achievers by the force of God's powerful Holy Spirit that's pushing you to the forefront and making you to be successful and prosperous in whatever you do. Verse 21. Are you ready? Yes. He will yet fill your mouth with laughter. And your lips with joyful shouting. Those who hate you will be clothed with shame. But you shall not be ashamed. Does that make sense? See, the scripture just explains the scripture, just explains the scripture. So that very scripture there is the first three verses of Psalm 126. So let's do it again. Okay, Psalm 126. When the Lord turned to gain the captivity. Now just stop and listen. Job 42 verse 10 says, When God turned the captivity of Job, he restored his fortunes. When God turned the captivity of Job, he restored his fortunes. Who prophesied it? Well, that the Shuhite. He said, although your beginning is small, God's going to increase your latter days and you will not be ashamed but your enemy will be ashamed but God's going to fill your mouth with laughter and your tongue with rejoicing. Hmm? Is that okay? So listen, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue was singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. And we are glad. Fear not. Be not afraid. Be glad then, ye children of Zion. For the Lord will bring you the rain, the former and the latter rain, and cause you pure flow of living water. Verse 4. Turn again now, captivity, O Lord. As the streams in the south, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weeping, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Mm. Everybody say harvest, harvest. supply, supply. success. Prosperity. Prosperity, restoration, restoration. Reviving. reviving is my portion. Yeah. Now, when God, when God talks about these waters, He doesn't only talk about you playing around in the water, He talks about you drinking this water. Yeah. All right. I will make you drink. Psalm 36, because you, with you is the fountain of living water. God says, if you come to that, I will make you drink. You know, you say, I'm not thirsty. He says, drink in any case. Because the drinking of the water of the well that never run dry doesn't fill you up that you, I can't drink anymore. I can't drink. It's, the more you drink, listen to this, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. So the more you drink, the bigger the river, the wider the river, the deeper the river. Yeah. Yeah. All who are thirsty can now come to me, says Jesus, and out of his belly shall flow. Jesus, no, you just said, if you're thirsty, now how can it flow if I'm thirsty? He says, well, this is how it operates. You just got to understand, 
if this water is there and you're in the water and the water is in you, it's like you don't know if you're in the river or the river is in you. It's going to be such a continuous supply of prosperity, success, and breakthrough power that you will not know, is it you playing in the river or is it the river flowing out of you? It's like Christ in you and you in Christ. It's like, so, wow. So John 4, John 7 says, you know, it shall be a spring in you, it shall be a fountain in you, it shall be rivers in you. So remember this weeping story. But how can you weep? He just said you're going to be laughing. You know? So we've got to get the context to understand what God is trying to say to us. So let's go to Psalm 84. And if you're there, there's more, more, more. Psalm 84 for more, 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 more. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, in whose heart are the ways of them. If you go to the Amplified Bible, I think it'll say highways. Everybody says highways. Listen to verse 6. Passing through the valley. You remember, remember Psalm 23? The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He takes me to the still waters. He restores my soul. And then if I go through the valley, I shall fear. <laughs> For I know he's with me because he just restored me at the waters. Is that all right? Passing through the valley, look at the Amplified. Of weeping. They make it a place of springs. They make it a well. And the rain also fills it pools. Okay. <laughs> These people that's just been to the waters and has been restored. If they go through the valley of weeping. They will make it. A well. Rain, pools, not tables, <laughs> springs amplified, not car, springs. <laughs> oh man. They go from strength to strength, and every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. O oh Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O oh God of Jacob, Selah. What this guy is saying, he say, this is the prophecies and this is the promises. If there's valleys and weepings and stuff, oh God, we're supposed to make it into a spring, into a rain, into a pool, into a well. It's supposed to be valleys. It's not supposed to touch us. We're supposed to touch valleys. So if we go through a dry place, ha, springs of living water, pools, rivers. God says, I will cause rivers in the wilderness, streams in the desert, pools in the dry places. He said it over and over in Isaiah. Now the psalm writer comes and says, if the person who knows his strength is in the Lord, who knows it all comes from him, and I don't trust myself, I believe in grace, so it all originates from God. In him we live and move and have our being. If I understand for from him and to him are all things. If I understand that. If I come to a valley and the people sit there weeping and I pass by. They start rejoicing because I am the river. The river is in me. Isaiah 35. The wilderness. Okay, you're supposed to hear. What happens in the wilderness? Rivers. Dry places. Okay. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice. Blossom like the rose and the autumn crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. I hope you've heard all the scriptures. 
The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the excellency of Mount Carmel and the plain of Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty and splendor and excellency of our God. Say, I take that. I take that. Come on. Put your thumb there. Ah, I take that. I take that. I make it mine. Come on. Kiss it. I take it, Lord. Thank you. Say, I'm going to see it. I'm going to see it. Strengthen the weak hands. Make firm the feeble and tottered knees. So Paul quotes this thing in Hebrews chapter 12. So we're reading actually a New Testament prophecy here. Say to those who are of a fearful and a hasty heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, here it comes. Your God will come with vengeance. With the recompense of God, He will come and save you. He will, He will, He will. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. The ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a heart. The tongue of the dumb shall sing for joy. Why? For water shall break forth. In the wilderness and streams in the desert. Water! And the burning sand and the mirage shall become a pool. And the thirsty ground springs of water. In the haunt of jackals where they lay resting shall be grass with reeds and rushes. Do you see Job 8 there? Do you see all those scriptures in Isaiah? Do you see Psalm 126? Do you see Psalm 84? Do you see Joel 2? Come on! The Bible declares the Bible! And a highway shall be there. And a way in it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for the redeemed. So it's not talking about how holy you are. It is what God is doing in you that the unholy people will not be able to pull you down, drag you down, put you in a desert place. They, they're going to start looking at you and say, oh, who are they? Because they trust in their riches. And it's proven now it doesn't mean a lot. But those whose strength is in the Lord, those who trust in their God, they will go from strength to strength to strength. And all the stuff that the heathens labored for, all of a sudden it comes like a stream towards us. The simple ones and the fools shall not even err in it or lose their way. So if your IQ is 35, you'll also make it. Yes. So God says, even if you're not very bright, you can still make it. Because I'm going to do it. Verse 9. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come up on it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk on it. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come. To Zion with singing, and everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, for I will cause the rain to come down for you. The former and the latter rain in the first. And I will cause rivers. And I will cause floods. And I will cause pools. And I will make you drink. Yeah. 
Just like a tree planted by the water, I shall not be moved. <laughs> You know, God says to Moses, I've revealed myself to Abram, Isaac, and Jacob as the Almighty God. But I've never revealed myself to them as Jehovah, the God that will keep his promises. Hmm? So Abram, Isaac, Jacob knew the Almighty God, but they never knew the intimacy of what I really want to do for them. So let's start looking at the first revelation of the Jehovah God. Exodus 15. This is going to bless you. Hmm. Verse 22, are you there? Then Moses led Israel onward from the Red Sea, and they went into the wilderness of Shur. They went three days, 33 miles in the wilderness, and found no water. When they came to Mara, they could not drink its waters, for they were bitter water. Therefore, it's, it was named Mara, bitterness. Change your name. Okay, the people... <laughs> The people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? He cried to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which he cast into the waters. And the waters were made sweet. There the Lord made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them, saying, If you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, and will do what is right in his sight, that's more or less what the Shuaite said to Job. And will listen to and obey his commandments and keep his statutes. I will put none of the diseases upon you which I brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord who heals you. The word there in the Hebrew tongue is, I am Jehovah Rapha. Some would translate it Rafeka, whatever. I am the Lord that healeth thee. When did the first revelation of Jehovah is our healer come? When the waters were bitter. Mm. Mm. And God says, Moses, now just take that tree and throw it in the water. So Moses took the wood. Moses threw it in the water. Moses made the water sweet. And when the people drank that water, God says, as they drink the water, listen. I am the Lord that healeth thee. Where? When they drank the water that was just blessed and made sweet. You ready? When the water was touched, the people drank it. Years ago, I, I had a tape by Judson Cornwall, for those who remembered him in the charismatic renewal. Uh, he brought a teaching, and he made a study of that scripture, and he brought a whole hour teaching out of that scripture, proving that the water gave them diarrhea. That's more or less what happened when you go to a strange country, and you drink their water, you know, you run. <laughs> so these people had a bitter experience. So the same water that made them. <laughs> to, 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 to have a stomach problem. Okay. The very same water. When Moses threw a tree into the very same water they drank and it healed them. God says, I want to say, I'm the Lord that healeth thee. So if I touch your water. Second Kings chapter 2. I'll prove it. Verse 19, the men of the city said to Elisha, behold, inhabiting of this city is pleasant. In other words, it's a good city to stay in. As my Lord says, but the water is bad. And the locality causes miscarriage and barrenness in all. Now it says animals, it's not animals, in all people. Even the ground were barren. He said, bring me a new bowl and put salt, the symbol of God's purifying power on it, and they brought it to him. Then Elisha went to the spring of waters, cast salt in it, and said, Thus saith the Lord, I, and not the salt, have healed these waters. 
There shall not be any more death. There shall not be any more miscarriages. There shall not be any more barrenness and bereavement because of it. So the waters were healed to this day as Elijah has said. You go to Nigeria, every second woman and man says, we got a problem of barrenness. Why? God says it. Water brings barrenness and brings miscarriages and water brings bereavement. So God says, get a prophet to heal the water, man. And if the water is healed, let them drink it. No more miscarriages, no more barrenness. When Elisha healed the water, people drank it and they were not barren anymore. When Moses healed the water, people had no diarrhea anymore. So that's why the people sang in 1946 in the, what we call the healing revival. Where the healing waters flow, where the love, the rest will grow. There is peace and joy and love, where the healing waters flow. And they sang it, and they sang it, and they sang it, and people got healed. Numbers 5, Numbers 19, Numbers 21, Numbers 23. You can go read it. It says, Moses, get Aaron and his sons. Take water and sanctify it. And let the priests take the holy water. What made the water holy? They sanctified it. How did they do it? They took the water and said, sanctify it. Just stick for a while and say, this is holy water. This is holy water. This is holy water. Get the book by the Japanese scientist, Messages in Water. Talk about how water picks up messages. And the water formation change, how you speak. If you say hatred, the crystals break up. If you say love, the crystals form. Beautiful, eight-sided crystals. Hmm. If you talk to water. Have you heard the story that plants grow when you talk to it? It's proven wrong. By, I nearly said Ghostbusters. What's that? Myth, <laughs> myth, Mythbusters. <laughs> yeah, they had those Mythbusters. They had that, uh, that one night they had those trees on the top of the building, those pl flowers in different settings, and they talked to it, play rock music to it, play classical music to it, and nothing happened. You know why? Because it's the water that hears, not the plant. So people that thought the plants listening, is they do it every morning, they water the plants. They say, plant, you're going to grow. You're a beautiful plant. You're going to bear much roses. It's the water that picks up the message, not the plant. Proven messages in water. So Moses, take the water, sanctify it. Then take his up and stuff, sprinkle the people. And if the people are sprinkled, the unclean shall be cleaned. Another place in Numbers, he says, if a woman has taken bitter water and her life is a mess, take water that has been sanctified. The one's place says, take the water of separation that you've separated from the other water and prayed over. Without normal water, take some of it, separate it, say, this water is now holy water. Then sprinkle it, and the people shall be healed. In your Bible. In 2 Kings chapter 5, here's the Syrian army, and they've got a super commander by the name of Naaman. Man, there's no commander like this guy. But unfortunately, he can't command his commands anymore because he's in a leper colony. Because the leper was not allowed in society. The Bible says there was a commander of the Syrian army. There was no man like him, but he was a leper. And there was a little girl, and, they, and she said, Man, there by the Israelites, there's a man of God that he can heal people. Hmm? Remember, just before that, 
when the king wanted somebody to help him, Jehoshaphat said, you know, we can get Elisha, the man who poured water on the hands of Elijah. Mm. Yeah. Why does he refer to water? You know, because Elisha said, make, make holes all over this valley, and tomorrow God will fill it with water. And the water will look like the enemy to blood, and they will get so scared, you know. So, so here comes Elisha. You know, uh, Naaman is now sent by the Assyrian army to the king of Israel, and the king of Israel tears his clothes and says, Am I God to heal or to kill? You send something because you want something against me. Elisha heard about it and said, Let him come to me, then he will find out that there's a prophet in Israel. So here comes the man in his chariot. Elisha says, go wash yourself in the Jordan seven times. Yeah. Naaman says, I'm not going to do that. His servant says, listen, my Lord, if the man of God would have asked you to do something, something very difficult, would you not have done it? Now he asks you something simple like go wash in the river. See, a river doesn't take leprosy away. But the guy jumped in the water, in, out, leper, 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 in, out, ah, skin like a baby's, fresh and clean. Exodus 23, verse 25, you shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless your bread and he shall bless your water listen to this and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee what is God actually saying he says if I've blessed your water and you drink it sickness will go that's what it says amplified now look at other translations. So, Father, we bless this water. This is holy water. So we have testimony upon testimony of people that took the water that we have here. They give it to sick people. Some drink it. Some wash. Some sprinkle it in their businesses. Their businesses start prospering. Oh, Kubus, that's magic. Well, nearly, but better. You know why the doubting comes? God tells us in 2 Peter 3. Verse 5. People willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Amplified. They willfully overlook and forget this fact that the heavens came into existence long ago by the word of God and the earth also which was formed out of water and by means of water. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was void and without form and darkness was on the waters. But the Spirit of the Lord hovered over the waters. God says, if I can't, can find waters to brood over, I will bring something out of it. Amen. Psalm 29, Revelation 119, Revelation 19, Psalm, what's it, I think 29 or 26 or something, he says, the voice of the Lord upon the waters. John says, I heard behind me a voice like many waters. And there was voices in heaven like many waters. And it said, Amen and Hallelujah. And it was like thunders when the waters came and it was the voice when I turned around, I saw him. Son of God, hair full of glory, white as wool, eyes like a flaming fire, feet like burning bronze, golden girdle. And he said, I am. And his voice was like many waters. He says, because it's out of water that I created, it's in water that you existed. The earth is water. You are two-thirds water. You need water. People die because of dehydration. 
First Chronicles 14. Just before I read it. There was this man, Samson. Without the spirit, he was already strong. He took the gates out of a city's wall without the spirit. That's strong, man. But when the spirit came upon him, yay, 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 300 jackals, you know, two by two come, two, tie their tails, next two come, tie, next two, you know, that's power. Okay. Or authority, I don't know. But then he killed 1,000 Philistines. And after killing 1,000 Philistines, I think you'd be tired. So this guy is, he's, he's half dead. He says, <gasps> with the jawbone of a donkey, I've killed 1,000 Philistines. Now, God, are you going to let me die of thirst? And the Bible says, and God split the rock open. And water came out. The Bible says, and Samson revived. I will pour water on him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. God is about to bring supernatural restoration, revival. Rain, Zechariah 10, 1. Pray the Lord for rain in the time of the latter rain. Isaiah 6, I will come to you like the rain, the former and the latter rain. Now listen to this. Verse 10. And David inquired of God, saying, Shall I go up against the Philistines, and will you deliver them into my hand? Remember now, Samson, we just did. And the Lord said unto him, Go up, for I will deliver them into your hand. So they came up to Baal Perusim, and David smote them there. Then David said, God has broken in upon my enemies by my hand, like the breaking forth of waters. Therefore they called the name of the place Baal Perusim, which means the Lord of the breakthrough. Come on, everybody say, the Lord's going to break through for me. Like the breaking through of waters. Man, nothing stands in the way of these waters. Water, 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 water. So if we need revival, a good word for revival is visitation. Psalm 65. Verse 9, amplified. You visit the earth and saturate it with water. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide them with grain when you have so prepared the earth. You water the fields, furrows abundantly. You settle the ridges of it. You make the soil soft with showers, blessings the sprouting of its vegetation. You crown the year of your bounty and goodness, and the tracks of your chariot wheels drip with fatness. He makes clouds his chariots and he rides upon the waters. He says he drips with fatness. The oil of the anointing drips when we understand when God visits a place, it'll be water, 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 water. Have you got it there? Matthew 3, 16, just listen. When Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens opened. And the spirit came in bodily form like a dove. God said, that is my son. And him I'm well pleased. In Acts chapter 8, Philip is preaching to the eunuch of, on, the, on the wagon. And as he's preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, this guy says, there's water. What hinders me to be baptized? Philip says, if you believe... He says, I believe. He says, and both of them went down into the water. Listen, and when they came up out of the water, the spirit grabbed Philip and just <laughs> transferred him and put him down in Asdot. So if we understand the power of baptism in water, we can be caught up by the Spirit. If we understand the power of the pool of Siloam, the pool of Bethesda, the waters of Elisha, the waters of Elijah, the waters of Moses, the waters of Jesus. Man, when we come out of the water, the Spirit can do stuff with us, can take us some places, can move us, can anoint us, can equip us. Hmm? 1 Peter 3.20 says, that's why the symbol of water is not for the saving of the soul, but for a prayer of a pure conscience. So some people never get victory over their consciences or their consciences never help them because they've never been baptized. Water baptism is not for the saving of your soul. 
1 Peter 3.20. But it's the prayer for a pure conscience. And that's why people that are not baptized struggle to get convicted about sin. People that are baptized just like this, and they feel, I can't do this. I mustn't do this. I shouldn't do this. 1 John 5, I'm finished. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him beget loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. For whatever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. This is he that came by water and blood. Even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that bear witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. There are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. He didn't define or qualify what water. He didn't say water of baptism. He didn't say water of birth. He didn't say water. He just says water. So he says, on earth. Now make it as simple as the almighty God will make it. Can I have a bottle of water? God's word says, water is a witness on earth that you can overcome by your faith.